Eh, a nombre de la Junta de Directores del Consorcio HEDS, le damos la más cordial bienvenida eh, al 2014 Best Practices Showcase Celebrating Technology Innovation for Hispanic Success in Higher Education. Mi nombre es Alfredo Calderón y estaré a cargo de presentar a los oradores de esta sección concurrente. Eh, tendremos eh, una sección de preguntas al finalizar la sesión, aunque el orador, en este caso oradores, le indicarán si prefieren hacer eh, que ustedes hagan las preguntas durante su presentación. Eh, eh, una nota al calce en relación con esta sesión, uno de los eh, conferenciantes o presentadores lo vamos a tener vía Skype. Eh, así que esto va a ser un, una presentación eh, colaborativa donde vamos a tener uno de los conferenciantes en línea. Eh, y como les mencioné, esta presentación será en español. Eh, tenemos disponible la traducción simultánea eh, en el canal correspondiente. Y si alguien necesita audífonos, están disponibles en la parte de atrás del salón o en la mesa eh, de entrada. Eh, les quiero recordar también que los teléfonos los pongan eh, a vibrar o en silencio para que puedan prestar toda su atención a la presentación. Eh, finalmente, quiero recordarles también que tenemos la forma de evaluación disponible que se le estaré entregando durante la presentación y al terminar la dejan en las filas donde se encuentren y yo pasaré a recogerla. En, en nuestra eh, presentación contaremos con eh, alguien que ustedes, eh, algunos de ustedes vieron en la sesión plenaria de panel de expertos de eh, ayer que es la doctora María Mercedes Ruiz, que se encuentra aquí con nosotros. Y en línea, eh, a través de Skype, tendremos a el compañero Jorge Hugo Muñoz eh, Marín eh, y a Wilbert Restrepo. Eh, todos vienen de la Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia, eh, así que la presentación eh, va a ser en español eh, para que se puedan expresar ¿verdad? con mayor fluidez. Eh, y podamos concentrarnos en, en, en su presentación. Eh, así que le damos la bienvenida a los presentadores de esta sesión. Adelante. Muchas gracias. Bueno, muchas gracias. Yo creo que la, la, la hora, en nombre de mis compañeros de la Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia, no pudieron, no pudieron asistir, pero afortunadamente con las, eh, con las tecnologías pues nos facilitan nos facilitan la comunicación. ¿Estás de acuerdo? Ellos pueden hacer la presentación en inglés o en español. ¿Tú qué prefieres? Pues la <coughs> Buenas tardes a todos. La presentación ahí, el, el, las slides están en inglés, pero no tenemos ningún problema en hacerlo en inglés o en español, como que le quede más fácil a la audiencia. Bien, eh, igual, eh, eh, como ustedes se sientan cómodos, eh, eh, nos dicen aquí, no hay ningún problema. ¿Mm? Ok, so we're doing it in English. Bueno. <laughs> Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, I would like to start by saying that uh, it's an honor being here and, and to participate in this in, a, in, a, in this event. We are Jorge Hugo Muñoz and Wilber Restrepo from Universidad Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia, and, and basically what we're going to present is our experience in a language learning in a language uh, preparation program that we have at Universidad Cooperativa. Basically, it's an experience that, it, that we called uh, incorporating technology to an, a, a gap course for medical students, the case of Open Lingua program at Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia. As I said before, uh, my name is Jorge Hugo Muñoz. Uh, I'm the coordinator of the language program uh, at the university. And uh, my colleague, uh, Wilber Restrepo, who works uh, with me here in this office. So the, uh, the agenda that we have for this presentation is basically trying to explain a little bit of the context that we have here, the course that we are uh, implementing with a kind of a different methodology, and uh, the positive and negative aspects that we have in this integration of technology uh, to language learning. Uh, to begin with, we, we would like to start with a reflection on the, on the role of, of integrating technology to language learning in this particular case. One of the things that we believe is that uh, 
as it's in in the slide, uh, institutions that do not incorporate the use of technologies in schools cannot seriously claim to prepare students for life in the 21st century. We believe, and this is not only uh, a belief of this uh, of Open Lingua, of the language learning program, but it's also a belief of the university that we need to start to create and to integrate uh, ICT in, uh, in, in learning. So this is uh, one of the first things that we that we have in our minds and that we're trying to accomplish in our program in with our students. And we also believe that it, the, the, the process of integration technology and in education, it's a process that varies from curriculum to curriculum, from place to place, class to class, and depending on, on a particular context. We believe it's not it, it doesn't work the same way for every uh, class or for every institution. It, each institution may have the possibility to adapt or to find the most appropriate ways to integrate this uh, technology or technology in general to the classroom. So that's what we're trying to do. Basically, this presentation is showing uh, an experience that we have that we're implemented right now in our program in how it, we are integrating ICT with language learning in this particular con uh, insights that I consider very, very important. Um, ah, okay, uh, next, next. We are, that agenda, reflection, In, con in context, yes. We are in context, thank you. In the first slide, uh, in this first part of the context, uh, our program, our language learning program, it's called Open Lingua. Um, this is like the institutional program in the university for students to uh, develop language learning, la language skills. Uh, the program started back in 2011 as a blended program since the very beginning it started as a blended program therefore the university bought uh, a multilingual platform to uh, design or to work with the blended part so we have basically we have face-to-face uh, -face classes and we have virtual classes uh, we teach languages based on the principles of communicative language teaching using task and those principles are basically the interaction in real world situation, the use of authentic materials. Uh, it's, a, it's a very learner-centered uh, approach and a lot of uh, effective feedback for students to use the language. Next. Uh, we are uh, in... Right now, we I, we can say that we are one of the more, one of the biggest universities in Colombia. Uh, I, I I'm afraid to say the the biggest, but I but I know that we are one of the biggest universities in Colombia. We have 18 different branches in the country, 18 different uh, branches in different cities of uh, of the country. We have in our program, the university has about 50,000 students uh, in all the country. We uh, in Open Lingua have about 13,000 students, uh, and we have about 100 students for level for levels of instruction. Those uh, uh, courses are part of the curriculum. At least that's supposed. That's like the what we are expecting to have in the future. Not all the programs right now have English in the curriculum, but most of them are are, are have English or sorry, most of those programs are including English as part of the curriculum. So we're offering four, four levels of instruction and we're also, we're, we also have three hours of face-to-face -face instruction and students are supposed to have three hours of virtual work a week. So we believe that students at least, they, they should have at least six hours of instruction uh, with the program. Of course, we, we would like to have more, and based on the records that we can obtain from the platform, we see that students usually have more than 
uh, more than three hours in the virtual environment. But that's like the like the the hours we have uh, or we we plan for the development of our program. Each level has nine, 96 hours of instruction per level, and at the end of the program, students should have completed uh, 375 hours of language instruction for a B1 level. That's like the, the institutional goal that we have. Although it may sound uh, that it's not very high because most of uh, um, universities are looking for a B2, we believe that our context in Colombia still, we, we still have problems with the development of of language, uh, foreign language skills in uh, in high school and primary school. So we believe B1, it's it's uh, it's an important, uh, let's say, level for students to accomplish, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, next, uh, first we would like before we start talking more, uh, before we start giving you more details about the program that we have, about the particular course that we're showing in this presentation, we would like to uh, give you a little bit of the of the theory, of theoretical uh, concepts that we use in a, in a, in our practice. First, the the idea of blended learning. Blended learning, it's the definitions that we have, it's basically, it, it talks about the combination of, of instructional modalities. It also talks about, uh, it, also, it is also defined as a combination of instructional methods and also the combination of, of online and face-to-face -face instruction. We are in, in Open Lingua, in this particular program, we are more for the for young definition of the combination of offline and face-to-face -face instruction. Next, we the definition that we like the most, or we kind of of uh, use for the developing of our courses, are based in these two, uh, let's say, authors. First, they talked about bl blended learning being a, a, a harmonious balance between online access to knowledge and face-to-face -face human interactions. We like very much the idea of finding a harmonious balance. It, it's not just combining face-to-face -face and virtual. It, it, also, it, it should also have a, a balance. And as much as possible, it should be harmonious. We also like the idea of a thoughtful integration of classroom face-to-face -face learning experiences with online experiences. And when we said about a, when we think about a thoughtful integration, we've talked about the possibility to uh, integrate the technology according to the needs and according to the students that we have in our classroom. It's not just integrating because it's in fashion or because it's something that it's, uh, that it should be done right now. It's, it's, uh, we would like to think that it's, uh, uh, it's a thoughtful integration because we are taking or we are uh, taking care of students' needs, and we're trying to integrate both environments the best way for them to learn. We, uh, we, well, we would like to describe a little bit the model that we use for learning. In the, in the previous description of the, con uh, of the context, uh, you, you, in, you, I show you that we have three hours uh, three hours face-to-face -face and three hours uh, virtual. Basically, that's a model that is called an enriched virtual model in which uh, basically students divide their time between attending face-to-face -face instruction and learning remotely using online delivery of content and instruction. That's what we do. Basically, students, they have to do face-to-face -face classes and they also have to dedicate time to uh, the virtual environment. The other three models, rotation model is basically about, is having different modalities. One of them at least is online, but, it, uh, but it's, it, it's not, let's say, uh, it doesn't have like a, like a particular amount of time one to the other, okay? The other is the flex model in which uh, online learning is the backbone of student learning but a student decides, each student decides when or how 
uh, he or she is going to have access to the teacher or he, or he or she is going to need the help of the teacher. In a self-planned model, it's basically, it's, uh, you have the whole course, it's online, but you have the possibility at the same time to, uh, to have access to, uh, to a teacher uh, for uh, let's say for improving or to uh, let's say work in some particular uh, features of the learning. So as I said before, in uh, Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia and Pro uh, Programa Open Lingua, we are using the enriched virtual model because we believe that uh, what we're doing is trying to have students uh, practice the language face-to-face -face with the teacher, but also they have some materials in a virtual environment that allow them to practice the language. Next. Uh, now I'm going to explain a little bit about the, the, the E-GAP, because that's one of the, the, the differences that we have. Uh, basically, we know or we are familiar with the term English for academic purposes, we, which is EAP. But, uh, this English for academic purposes has uh, two different branches. One, one that is called EGAP, which is English for general academic purposes, and it's about deal. Uh, it's about dealing with uh, teaching students skills and academic futures of language common for different disciplines. It's about teaching students about uh, very particular academic skills but not particular to uh, an area of knowledge or a discipline, okay? And the ESAP, which is English for Specific Academic Purposes, which focuses on teaching English typical or specific scientific discipline. The difference between ESAP and EGAP is that EGAP, the English for General Academic Purposes, is basically that we try to develop students' academic skills for in, 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 lang in, in the language, but we don't, uh, we don't focus on that particular discipline, okay? We use the discipline as, as topics or as you're going to see as tasks for students so that they, the, let's say they, uh, they see English also as a very relevant uh, subject for them to learn in their area. But it's not about develop, it's not about being specific in that topic. I want to be very, very clear about that. Next. Uh, the EGAP, to make it very clear for you, it's uh, it's uh, activities such as, for example, listening to lectures, reading textbooks, articles, other material, writing e e essays, dissertations, and reports are very general academic skills. Yeah, and the the objective is learners can may have the possibility or may have the necessary skills to complete tasks in a general academic setting. Take notes doing presentations, arguing, things that are very common in different areas of knowledge. Uh, so therefore, if we think about the characteristics of EGAP, it's, uh, it's uh, for example, you don't need uh, expertise or, let's say, let's put it like this, you don't need language teachers who are experts on a particular discipline. Language teachers are language teachers, and they can with this kind of courses with EGAP with this particular idea. They don't have to be experts on medicine or, or any other particular discipline. Uh, claims that it's very, it, it is more suitable for students who have a limited English proficiency. As I said before, here in Colombia, we still have problems. Uh, with language uh, proficiency. So we believe EGAP can help us uh, to with students with this difficulty so that they can have the possibility to uh, improve in the language learning. Uh, it is also very important to say that EGAP it's more likely to develop its own independent subject knowledge and skills. So we can, according to what we're, to the needs that we have with students, we can design programs and, 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 and tags and, and topics that are more uh, 
more related to what students are interested in and not being like uh, no, we don't have to follow a particular set of uh, academic skills but we can use the ones that we need it's it let's say it is not very uh, strict in that sense and finally the EGAP prepares students for unpredictable assignments and te and tax so what we want is that students are able not only to uh, for example to follow specific academic skills but they can also be prepared to uh, kind of uh, explore other different assignments next so with so the, the, the implementation of the course it, th this is a very important thing and, and this when we are starting to focus on the particular uh, uh, course that we are developing here in the university students have four levels of English instruction so they have 384 hours okay in the in the in the four levels of instructions that they have in this particular case we are working with medical students who have one additional level they have level five for these students we adopted a different uh, approach yep according to their needs we continue the, the 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 program is still blended learning we still focus on the communicative language teaching we based on tax and we use the EGAP approach. This is different from what we do in the other programs. In the other programs, we, tr we, we work with the communicative language teaching, but in this particular course, we're using the EGAP because it's a, it's a, it's a particular group of students, medical students, and because we believe we can uh, 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 integrate easier the material in the, in the platform with what we do face-to-face. So the purpose of, the, of this course is to integrate students' academic skills in English with a particular discipline, okay? So now Wilbur is going to explain you or is going to give you more details about the, this integration that we do with the uh, language learning and uh, the uh, virtual environment with this EGAP uh, methodology. Next. All right, uh, my name is Wilbur Restrepo and I'm going to continue with the presentation. Uh, uh, before, I want to, to tell you that it's a pleasure for me to share this kind of experience with all of you. As you can see in the chart, there are three main parts of the course, task, platform activities, and academic skills. Uh, we have four units in the course. Every unit has a tax in which the students uh, has to the, the students have to to study every session in order to uh, to get all their vocabulary and all the skills uh, in order to present or to be able to uh, participate or interact with all these information they have studied during the uh, unit. Uh, as you can see at unit one, we have the uh, describe the medical history of a patient. Okay, right here, we study uh, parts of the human body and common disease. Uh, as you can see, this information is not too specific. It's not for uh, expertise or skilled people. Uh, teachers don't have to be doctors in order to teach this kind of uh, uh, vocabulary or topics to the students. And then we integrate this with a uh, platform in order to, um, in order to uh, give the students uh, pr more practice opportunities to interact with the language. Next. Okay, the course, as I told you before, the course has 16 sessions. Uh, every session is studied weekly. Okay, uh, the content is divided in, as I told you before, is divided in four units, and each unit has a particular task to develop in order to practice the language. The idea is uh, to study in every session some vocabulary, some structures uh, in order to 
to interact at the end of the unit uh, with all this information and to share all this information in some presentations or some role plays with all the class. The platforms uh, provide opportunity for students to practice the language outside the classroom. It is really, really important for the students. Why? Because uh, as I told you before, uh, the class is held uh, weekly. So uh, this platform gives the opportunity to the students to continue studying and practice, practicing at home or in their office. Uh, in, this, in this way, they have the opportunity to be in contact with the language uh, most of the time outside of the classroom because in this way they can improve their uh, skills in the language. Uh, platforms uh, help students to uh, improve their uh, pronunciation skills, their um, also their grammar skills and their reading comprehension skills. Okay. Uh, Platform also allows teachers and students to record their performance. It means that uh, every time they study a session in the platform, they receive a kind of score and students and the teachers have the opportunity to record this kind of uh, scores and in this way, you know, teachers and students have, uh, can uh, uh, can measure and check their performance in who the course. Um, the platform also gives the opportunity uh, or, or the chance to uh, to evaluate the students before or before starting the course and at the end of the course. It means that. They, they do a kind of test in order to check how their level of English is before starting the course. And then when they finish the course, they do another kind of test in order to check how much they have improved during the course. Um, I would like to say something uh, additional to what Wilbur is explaining. And it's this is basically the, the role that we have uh, given to the to the platform in the course, as as you saw uh, a minute ago, we are we're having we have the design, we have uh, a, um, a tax, we have the skills that the students are supposed to develop, and we have the the material in Tell Me More. What in in the platform Tell Me More? So what we basically want is that the platform gives students the opportunity to practice, and all those features that are possible. Uh, in the platform should help students to uh, improve their language according to the tasks that they have to perform. This is a very important issue and that's why I, I kind of interrupt what Wilbur was saying because it, it is uh, it usually and uh, a lot of the a lot of the the, the processes that there are integrating uh, technology in education are, or, at, or what we believe is that they, we should first see how, how they can help you and so that they can be useful. What we believe in Universidad Cooperativa and Programa Open Lingua, it's basically that, we, that, that the platform is very useful in terms of providing students with opportunities for practices. We are an ESL, we are an EFL context. We are, a, this is English for foreign languages. Our, our mother tongue is Spanish. And uh, basically, we don't have a lot of opportunities for practicing. So what we do here as an opportunity, uh, it's the possibility for students to use the platform to practice the language for the class, but also for, for, for let's say, for the needs or for the necessities that they have for learning. So that's a very important issue that we want to, 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 to point out. And when we talk about the positive and, and negative effects, you're going to see that it, it makes a difference uh, for what we're trying to do. Uh, Wilbur. All right. Another thing which is really relevant right here in these kind of causes is that students 
have the opportunity to study some topics which are connected or related to the uh, uh, kind of discipline they are uh, studying in their regular career. This is really important because they can uh, interact with the uh, uh, knowledge they have in their native language where, and they can connect it with the target language. This is really, really important because in this way, a student got more motivated in order to participate in all the debates we have in class. Next. Yeah, next. Uh, now we're going to talk about the uh, positive aspects. There are many positive, positive aspects right here. The first thing is that uh, we have right here, in this moment, last semester, sorry, we have seven courses. Four right here in Medellin and three courses, three extra courses in Pasto. Uh, we had, uh, we got about 109 students and uh, 93 students accepted the, uh, the instruction on the platform. It means the 85%. Yeah. Uh, number 14, positive aspects. Okay, all right. Very good. We have seven courses starting this kind of uh, new uh, course, right? As I told you before, four courses right here in Medellin and three more in Pasto. Uh, in these seven courses, there were about 109 students, um, but only 93 students started uh, the platform instruction. I mean, they started uh, starting all the topics and interacting with all the uh, topics uh, we have designed for them in the platform. And 15 percent of the students didn't start, uh, start platform instruction. Uh, some of them because they canceled the, the course before starting. Okay, uh, their results were very, very good because 80% of the content assigned was uh, done by the students on the platform and 90 Seven percent of the, uh, of the content uh, was correct. Next, okay, R yeah, more positive aspects: uh, the adaptability of the platform to the students' needs. It's really, really important because. Uh, in regular courses, they have to study some, uh, uh, let's say, international aspects in order to uh, interact with the language. But now in level five, uh, they are interacting with some topics which they have to study in, in their career. So this is very important because then they can have a real interaction with the language and their real professional lives. Uh, I would like to say too that it, uh, it is also the, the adaptability, is, it's also related to the possibility that we have to create, uh, let's say, the content and then uh, adapt the platform to the particular content that we created. Let me put it this way. It's, uh, the content that we have, it's, uh, it's created according to the, the needs that we have with our students. The platform is adapted to, those, to that content. So what we do is basically we explore the, the platform, uh, the content that the platform and the exercises and the practices that the platform offer. And then what we do is design or select, sorry, select the content, the exercises, and everything that we consider could help students to, uh, uh, let's say, 
to participate in that unit or to use the language in that unit or to practice the language in that unit. So it is a very important issue for us and it's something that we consider very valuable is that the, we could we could adapt the platform content and ev almost every single feature that the platform has, we can adapt it to our needs, which is something very, very important. Wil Wilber. All right. Uh, the platform also gives students the opportunity to uh, study the vocabulary and the structures before class. It means that th when they get to class, they can interact and participate in class uh, about the topics they have studied at home or in their office. Um, this is really relevant because uh, they can get some vocabulary and some instructors and, and some things which uh, help uh, students to have a real participation in class because they can uh, talk about the things they really know and they really like. Next. Now we're going to talk about the negative aspects. Obviously, there are some negative aspects. Uh, for example, uh, for not only for some students, but also for some teachers, the lack of technology skills, because sometimes some students and some teachers don't, are not well skilled in the using of technology. Uh, there's one thing that I would like to say too, and it's uh, this is a very surprising issue that we have encountered or we have found here in our program. Uh, we believe, or we're all, I don't know, it's a, it's a common belief that uh, people or young people nowadays, it's very familiar to technology and it's very, and technology is very easy for them. What we have found is, yeah, they have the, the, the facilities to access for technology. But we, what we have found is that it's not that easy to use technology for educational purposes. Uh, what, we have, what we have seen is that they are very good using uh, social media, YouTube, everything that it's in the web for their particular sources of, for, so, sorry, for their particular purposes, but they are not so good when they have to use it for academic purposes. So what we have found there it's uh, the, the difficulties with technology in particular platform environments is not that easy. We have found some difficulties there and we have, uh, we are trying to uh, uh, make things better by training teachers and students. It is a very difficult process because there's a lot of people, but that's basically like the idea that we have. I will, I, I will, uh, Students' low level of English from previous courses, what I said before, uh, in Colombia we still have problems with the language proficiency issue. It's, uh, we have, uh, we still have a lot of, uh, uh, how to say this, we, most of the people that we have here, is, it, it doesn't have a big one level, not even as professionals. And, uh, and it's a problem that comes from high school and primary school. So we believe when we start working with these students in our courses, and even when they are in the fifth level, in the, in the fifth level of instruction from these medical students, what we're realizing is that they still have problems with the previous information or the previous competences that they should have when they are in the, in the fifth level. The lack of continuity of teachers at the university, which is something that we believe this is going to be a, 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 a is not going to be a very big issue, because uh, the university has been changing the, the policies of uh, hiring people. So right now we have have uh, teachers not by, not contract or not hired as by the hour teachers, but we have teachers hired as full time teachers. I think that, that's something that is going to help us a lot this year, but it's something that it's a little bit complicated. And the lack of training for teachers. And this is something that, that for us is a very important issue because for this particular course in medicine with the medical students, we realize that uh, we have language teachers and as language teachers, as, as we didn't have or we didn't need experts in the area of knowledge, to have those classes, 
we have to provide teachers with more information about an e-gap, what is the, the development of academic skill, because that information, it's not that clear. So we, we, we realized that that part was kind of a, a, one of the difficulties that we have. Uh, some of the conclusions that we had from this, from this uh, experience, we, we hope to make it a, a, a research study in the future, but right now it's basically an experience. It's that we believe that the opportunities offered by technologies are not fully exploited basically because of the relevant training offered to teachers and students. As I said before, we believe that one of the problems that we have uh, in, our pro in our program right now are not related with the platform content or the way that the, we're integrating that in the classroom because we believe, although we may have difficulties, we believe we're doing a process we kind of uh, feel good about. The most difficult thing that we're facing right now are the, the difficulties uh, with the training of students and teachers in the use of technology. Uh, let me give you a, a very simple ex uh, an example. A student uh, is facing a problem with technology and for these particular students in medicine, when they have a, a problem with technology, they usually uh, don't, don't have like, the, the resources or the possibilities to see how they can solve the problem right now in, in that particular moment. And when they go to uh, and they when they go and look for the teacher to help them with the problem, the teacher doesn't have. Sometimes teachers don't have the the answers right a, right right away. So it becomes like a problem that could be very easily solved. It takes like one or two days too much for something that be, that can be solved in a in a, a, a let's say in a short period of time. We also believe that that the that blended learning, in, in, in this conclusion, that blended learning represents a, a very, very important opportunity for reconceptualize and reorganize the teaching and learning as dynamic, uh, as a more dynamic and trying to think of more uh, contextual needs of students. Yeah, we believe that opportunity to, okay. Yeah, yeah. So the the whole thing it's it's about blended learning as also as an opportunity to improve what we're doing in our classroom. Next, and the final conclusion that we have, the final slide that we have, it's that uh, we believe that the the technology can help us with the, in can help teachers enhance their their pedagogical practice, but also assist students in their learning, and therefore we need strategies and that's what we're trying to do we need strategies to make it possible in this particular environment uh, we also have a conclusion that this particular course with an e-gap uh, approach it motivates and increases students commitment in the learning and teaching processes uh, sorry in the learning process and uh, because uh, the, the subject English somehow becomes more relevant for them in their discipline. And finally, uh, as I said before, we, I think we need to start researching and, and trying to find more, more information about the, the challenge, which is blended learning in, in, in our particular open lingua program. That's basically the presentation. As, as we said before, uh, we wanted to show you an experience that we have with the, with the integration of, of technology uh, in the classroom, which for us has been a very interesting experience that we still believe, that we believe we have still a lot to do, but so far we have found uh, very good results with students in the classroom. Thank you very much. I, I don't know if there is time for questions. We would like to take some questions if it's possible, or if, or if, if not, uh, I can give you my email, I, you have it there, so if we can talk about this or if you have anything to say in particular, uh, we would like to hear it. Okay.
Uh, thank you, uh, Hugo and uh, uh, Wilbur, for your presentation. Uh, are there any questions from the uh, audience regarding their presentation, their project? Uh, Jorge, Hugo, uh, and Wilbur, there there don't, doesn't seem to be any more questions. Again, uh, thank you both for uh, virtually presenting uh, your new initiative Open Lingua at uh, Universidad Cooperativa de Colombia, and to Maria Mercedes, Mercedes for aiding uh, you in, in this presentation. Thank you very much. No, you, you're welcome. Uh, we uh, finally, I would like to say that we uh, we decided to include or to to have this presentation because we believe that in heads we can find a very good opportunity to promote language learning with the use of technology. Thank you very much for all the people who, co who, who came to the presentation. Oh, thanks a lot. OK, thank, thank you. you. A round of applause for them, please. <laughs> Hope to see you in the summer in, in New York in our summer meeting. Uh, OK, thank you very much. <laughs> OK, so bye. Uh, bye, okay, bye. bye. Uh, with this, we, we conclude this session. And we will start with the next session in about uh, 10 minutes. Uh, thank you all for your uh, presence here. Fill out the evaluation form and, and leave it at the end of your row and I'll pick it up. If you don't have one, uh, raise your hand and I'll give you one. Thank you.